Yet again, we're testing more games on Apple M1. On screen, you can see the Macs that we tested some of these games on. If you're a developer and plan to update or port your game to Apple M1, please let me know on Twitter or via email found on the About page of this channel. Thanks! Towers of Everland is a terrific action RPG, which released on Apple Arcade earlier in the year. Recently, the developer updated it with official M1 support, ARM64. It's now a universal build for Intel and Apple Silicon machines. As I said in my previous video, there is currently no way of tracking a game's frame rate on the App Store. However, the developer has told me that the game should be hitting a solid 60 FPS. We tested the game across all of our M1 Macs and could turn all the graphics settings up to full, i.e. render scale max, FPS, 60, detail, high, and all advanced settings set to max. The developer are using their own internal proprietary game engine, and that combined with M1 means towers can run really fast. Dirt 4 did not launch on the first macOS Big Sur release, but with 11.1 it is now playable. The game's performance is pretty great here. Mind you, the Dirt games have always been pretty low-end friendly on Mac. Just like Dirt Rally, Dirt 4 can scale well on a variety of Macs, all the way back to 2012 in some cases. Mind you, most integrated Intel Macs would never be able to play this game at 1080p and at a high or ultra quality preset with a smooth frame rate. Well, across all our M1 models, at the ultra quality preset, we're seeing 45 FPS for MacBook Pro and Mac Mini on average, and 35 FPS on average for MacBook Air. And at high, we're seeing an average of 60 FPS for MacBook Pro and Mac Mini on average. That said, for MacBook Air at high, it does drop a little below 60 at times. My Logitech G920 steering wheel was recognized by the game in the settings menu, but when it came to actually using it in game, it didn't work. As I've said in my previous videos, on Apple M1 or Big Sur, there are sometimes issues with gaming peripherals. Hopefully this is updated as soon as possible because I want to use my steering wheel. It's great. In my first M1 video, you may remember I said that you can't open iOS games in full screen. Well, this has been updated in the new Big Sur update for M1. Here, we have the iPad version of Space Marshals 3, a sci-fi shooter opening in full screen. Nice. Mind you, it's opened in a 4x3 aspect ratio, as that is what the iPads use. Still, it's great news, and it's now easier to see what you're actually doing in these games. Originally released on PC and console in August 2020, NXile just ported this fantastic RPG to Mac. At the medium quality preset, we're seeing 45 FPS on average on a MacBook Air, and at high, 20 to 45 FPS. It's definitely best to play at the medium quality preset right now. One more thing to consider is that on M1, we are seeing some visual artifacts. I imagine the game will be updated across the board soon. Parallels Desktop 16 has just been released for M1 with a technical preview. This means you can install Windows 10 on Apple M1. Keeping in mind, it's not available to the general public. You have to sign up to the free technical preview program from the Parallels website, and then you must download the free Windows 10 client ARM64 Insider Preview. In this preview, you can install X64 games from any location of your choosing. OpenGL and DirectX 11 are supported in Parallels 16, but not every game will be playable here. We found that it's best to play 2D games, old games, low-end games, or games with official ARM64 support. 
In the video description, I've linked a YouTube tutorial from Andrew Sai on how to set up parallels on your Apple M1 based machine. For example, the Epic Store version of GTA 5 is an X64 DirectX 11 game and it will run, but at 720p resolution and medium settings and is targeting 30 FPS under settings. However, the game is incredibly laggy when you first launch the game, but after a few minutes it actually does stable out at 30 FPS. I've allocated 8 cores and 4 gigabytes of memory to parallels. Okay, yes, the performance here isn't great. It's kind of on par with what you would have seen on PS3 or Xbox 360. But let's consider this. GTA 5 is running under emulation in a hosted operating system nested in a hypervisor. Do I suggest that you try this at home? Probably not. It's very, very complicated to set up. But if you enjoy tinkering around, go for it. It's all free. Regardless, this is promising stuff and soon maybe Windows 10 ARM will be available for bootcamp on Apple M1 and that will be exciting. In my last episode, I showcased The Witcher 3 running on my M1 MacBook Pro through Crossover. I wanted to show Resident Evil 3 in that same video, but the game always crashed when starting a new game. Well, thanks to the Mac Gaming Reddit server, Reddit user Abstracts discovered that to get around this crash, you have to have a cloud save that is beyond the opening intro. Then it will launch correctly. When you start playing the game, you will notice that there is a lot of texture popping. I believe this is because the Apple M1 uses unified memory and Resident Evil 3 has no idea how to detect it. So it goes crazy with these visual bugs. That is just my theory. Other than those issues, the game's overall performance is not bad. I'm playing at a balanced preset and the FPS is targeting 60 in the settings. That said, the Steam FPS counter is not working with crossover, so I am unable to track the game's frame rate. That said, to my naked eye, I'd say it's around 60 FPS indoors and around 30 outside. If I play the game at a higher quality preset, the game would see too many stutters during combat, so balanced was the way to go. Honestly, I love this game. I've already finished it five times on PS4, and I played the original game so many times on PS1. So for me, it's super special seeing it playing on Mac. I know, I'm weird. This episode marks the whole Tomb Raider trilogy for these Apple M1 videos. Rise of the Tomb Raider might be four years old, but it's still quite demanding for Mac. For an Intel Mac, you need a 2GB NVIDIA 680MX, or a 2GB AMD R9 M290, or a 1.5GB Intel Iris Graphics 540 or better to play the game. So, how does Apple M1 fare? At the high quality preset, our MacBook Pro is getting 43.35 FPS. On Mac Mini, 43.42 FPS. And on MacBook Air, 40.38 FPS. At medium, 46.43 on MacBook Pro, 46.94 on Mac Mini, and 43.63 on MacBook Air. And finally, on low, 53.32 on MacBook Pro, 56.42 on Mac Mini, and 50.58 on MacBook Air. The thing to consider though is that there are some visual artifacts in some scenes and load times are quite long. I'm sure Feral will update the visual artifacts in the new year. However, the load times is very similar to Intel so I don't know if they can fix that. Anyway, what I love with this game is how it has touch bar support on MacBook Pro. You can press play to launch the game or when in game, you can switch arrow types and load your last checkpoint with a tap of a finger. Man, I wish more developers would add this to their games because it's just super unique and super cool. Scourgebringer is a unique free moving action game. 
It was just updated with official Rosetta 2 support for Apple M1. It plays just fine, always seeing 60 FPS with the graphic option Pixel Perfect enabled. It's obviously not a powerhouse of a game, so this performance isn't going to blow anyone away. But it's good to see more games being updated for M1. Only issue here is that controller support doesn't work right now. Sadly, MX GP3 is not working on Apple M1 right now. Steam says it's a 32-bit app, but this is completely false. I checked the game's files under Terminal and it is a 64-bit app with both Metal and OpenGL support. So, it should run here, so I don't know what's happening. Talomia 2 Curse of the Kittens was just updated on Steam to version 0.1.7a, bringing Apple Silicon support for Rosetta 2. It plays at 120 FPS at max settings. Don't be put off by the 2D graphics here, because holy moly, this action roguelike is such a good time. Whoa, it's super violent and really satisfying to play, trust me. On Steam, you'll get a warning that this space shooter, Everspace, is 32-bit and won't launch. But again, this is completely false. The game is 64-bit and uses the Metal API. Weirdly, the Steam FPS counter is not working with the game too, so it's hard to determine the performance. Keeping that in mind, I'm playing at the high quality preset, and to my naked eye, it does seem rather smooth, but during some challenging scenarios, it clearly drops below 60 FPS. Controller support is not working right now either. Free RPG Path of Exile was just ported to Mac on Steam. It works on Intel Macs, but on Apple M1, it won't launch right now. Bugger. Soma is such an amazing horror game. First, I finished it on PS4, and then on my Mac the same month in 2016. It's not a demanding game, but keep in mind, integrated Intel graphics are not supported, but they should work on Intel HD 4000 series or better, but with issues. Considering the game is also using OpenGL, I was impressed that at the high quality preset, it gets 50 to 60 FPS on average on my M1 MacBook Pro. The weird thing though is that my PS4 controller was recognized and the UI changed accordingly, but it didn't actually work. We really need an update for this controller issue ASAP. I don't know whose end it's on. Is it Apple or is it Steam? I don't know. Not gonna lie, I'm disappointed with the performance for Tacoma. To get near 60 FPS, you need to play at low settings. At medium or high, it gets around 30 to 40 FPS. Even at low, there were still a few major frame rate drops. The game uses OpenGL, so that could be the problem. I don't know if this game will be updated anytime soon, so I would not suggest playing it on M1 at this time. The signifier works, despite Steam saying it's 32-bit. The game is 64-bit and uses the Metal API. At high settings, it gets 60 FPS on average. During some challenging scenarios, the FPS does drop, but it's not terrible. One thing I noticed is that when moving, there is some weird stuttering going on. I don't know if you can see it on screen, but it was noticeable when I was playing. I don't know if this is a design choice to match the game's psychological horror approach, but it made me feel sick after a while. Alba, a wildlife adventure, is a wonderful open-world adventure game on Apple Arcade. On iPhone and iPad, you can't change any graphical settings, but on Mac, you can change the quality preset, texture quality, anti-aliasing, level of detail, and enable post-processing and shadows. We can't track the FPS, but Ostroy Games did recently inform me that Alba targets 60 FPS on higher-end iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs. So, I think it's safe to say it's 60 FPS here too. 
If you're looking for a game with no violence or something to relax with during this holiday period, definitely check out this one because it's a gem and it's just really pretty and beautiful. Obduction was one of the first new games to arrive on Mac with Metal API support shipping at launch. This was back in March 2017. The game is not considered terribly high-end in 2020, but at the time, Apple used the game almost as a tech demo to show the high-end possibilities of the Metal framework. In fact, at one point, the developer Cyan promised a VR version for Mac, but this never came to be. I have the Mac App Store version here, so I can't track the frame rate. Keeping that in mind, playing it high, it appears to hit 60 FPS at all times. This detective adventure already has mixed performance for Intel Macs, even high-end machines. On M1, it doesn't fare much differently, to be honest. It's playable, yes, but it should be much, much better. At the high quality preset, it sits at 30 FPS most of the time, and at medium, it's 30 to 50 FPS. After Party plays pretty well at the ultra quality preset on M1. It seems to be hitting 50 to 60 FPS most of the time. Sadly, cloud saves are not working in both the Steam and Epic Store version. Anyway, if you're interested in buying the game, you should know that After Party has some of the best writing out there and a great funny story about hell. Yes, hell. Definitely check it out. If you watched my first video, you would have seen that Hades didn't launch on M1, but in the new macOS Big Sur update, it's now playable. Yay! It plays at 60 FPS at all times, with VSync on or off. It's a beautiful game with a great story, gameplay, visuals and soundtrack. I'll be honest with you, I'd rather play Hades over Cyberpunk 2077 any day. What do you think of the M1 gaming performance in this episode? Impressed or disappointed? Let me know in the comments. This is my last Apple M1 video for the year. Thank you so much for watching this series and for the wealth of support. I'm really excited for what Apple do next with Apple M1 and the rumored Apple M2. PowerPC was the golden era of Mac gaming for me, and I want Apple Silicon to match that period. While the performance is obviously a massive step up from what integrated chips could do in the past for Mac, my main concern now is whether more developers will port their existing or new games to the platform, because not even a handful of games have been officially updated for M1 since it launched. Apple really need to work more closely with developers if they want to make a dent in the gaming industry and show what Macs are really capable of when it comes to gaming. My name is Stewie and see you in 2021.